It's one of the seven natural wonders of the world. 2,000 kilometres of coral that stretches along the northern coast of Australia. But under the crystal clear water lies a murky reality. Marine life in the Great Barrier Reef is slowly disappearing. Over two million tourists venture out each year to swim among the sea life. Actually, I've heard lots about it for years, so this is kind of like, I guess, Disneyland for divers, I guess. They take the plunge for an hour-long dive. The Great Barrier Reef is the largest living organism in the world, and for many species, the coral is not only their home, but a vital source of food. Yet despite the bright-coloured plants and animals, the ecosystem is under threat. Margot has been studying the reef for the past 10 years. She's seen marine life die out little by little as the temperature of the water rises. Everything's dying before our eyes. It's as though the reef is calling for help. And as a result, parts of the reef are completely lifeless. Fish have fled, the coral has died. Half of the barrier reef has disappeared over the past 30 years as coral bleaching becomes more frequent. When the temperature of the water rises above 30 degrees, the corals expel an algae, causing them to turn completely white. This depletes them of their energy, and many end up dying. Bleaching occurred on an unusually large scale in 2016 and 2017, and the phenomenon is happening in oceans all over the world. If we lose a coral, we lose a quarter of the habitat available to the fish, meaning a quarter of the fish could die, and then a quarter of the mammals that rely on fish for food could die too. So it starts with the whales who eat the plankton, then it moves on to the sharks, etc. The Australian government has invested over 20 million euros into a new research facility to study changes in the reef. Craig Humphrey and his team at the Australian Institute of Marine Science have made a promising discovery. They've identified a Caribbean coral with a stronger resistance to rises in water temperatures and have crossed it with an Australian strain. You see, we created hybrid crosses and then we exposed them to higher temperatures and changing pH. And we found that the hybrids were more resilient to those um, climate stresses than the pure bread strains. Which provides us with a mechanism possibly for creating more resilient corals. It may be the start of a new phase of research, but the task is colossal. The government has promised to invest a total of 350 million euros to save the reef, but activists have called it a hypocritical move. The government is backing the opening of a giant coal mine by Indian multinational Adani, and Australians across the country are determined to prevent the project from succeeding. They are very pro-coal, pro-Adani, at the same time as which they, they pay lip service to the idea of protecting the reef. Due to the pressure from activists, all the local and international banks have pulled out from the project. But so far, the government is standing firm and refusing to bow down. <laughs>